what's up guys this is Avery here and today we're coming out with the ninth episode of our game development tutorial series so we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it and looking at the last thing we did we made it so the tiles can be displayed and like you saw there for a second it takes a second to show up because basically how we're having it display for right now it has the giant map where it has the towers up here and has the rest of the building and our program is actually calculating all these tiles and that's kind of slowing down because these tiles here they don't need to be calculated until they're being displayed and I'm gonna have a video in the description the boxes right here you can look at it and this video is a different channel where he talks about really why it should be like that what makes it better and he uses Terraria as an example so we're gonna go ahead and do that but before we get that fixed there's a few other things I wanted to show you so I made a make file and go ahead and do make someone had mentioned that requested in the comment and I'll have the description also in the repo but I'll show you how that works now let's just go ahead and open up everything so here's the make file that I made it's very simple I usually don't make them so it might not be the greatest but basically I set the compiler to G++ I put in these library flags for SDL the font the images and then I have it compile individually every single one of the file classes and then it merges them all together into the a.out and then I have it individually remove it if you do make clean it can also remove the game file itself so that's basically how it is it's, it's really simple it's not too complex of a make file but I'll have this in the description for you guys to copy if you guys want but it's basically the same thing as this build.sh was using that we had before but yeah now we can go ahead and we're going to actually, before we jump right into the thing that I was talking about, we're going to fix a few things that some people have mentioned. So just one thing, if you go ahead and hear in the audio, it's, I don't know, maybe you guys noticed and already got it yourself, but there's no constructor. It, for right now it hasn't changed anything, but you can go ahead and add your constructor. And in the C++, the game C++, we can take this right here, the static int last time, and we're just going to take that right out of the loop. It doesn't need to be initialized every single time. So that's just still going to work as well. And also, these right here, someone had asked for us to do um, just check in if they're working error testing. Usually, people will do try and catch, but for SDL, we don't really need to do that. SDL has their own function, so we can this SDL in it, he returns an integer. So we can check for what the error was. So you just do it in an if statement in if zero is greater, so if it returns a negative one or something, that means there's an error. So we go ahead and we can print out what the error was. So we'll just do count and we'll say failed at SDL in it. And then the actual function is SDL get error. And I will be able to print out there. And STL set window it doesn't return in anything. It doesn't have. It's just a void function. But this create window, it returns something. So we can go ahead and do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna copy that right there. And you go ahead and just copy this as well. And just switch it out with that one. And we're also going to check on one more thing on the object file where it loads in the image. And we'll check it as well. The image actually uses this SDL image. So it's going to be the function is a little bit different, but it's basically the same thing. But what we're going to want to do, make it simple, we'll just set the surface image. And then we'll be able to do an if, we'll check if it works, and then else if it, well, here we'll check if it's failing. So we'll go ahead and set zero greater. And if it worked, that's when we can actually load it. So surface, and then we'll just grab that. And then we'll also have that right in here. Oh. Yeah, we'll just have that right in there. And right here, we can say out failed on uh, failed at set image there now we put image load and then because it's in the image SDL library you can do image get error 
in line. And now we can go ahead and make that just to make sure everything's working. And got rid of that slumpy semicolon. Copy that on accent. But yeah, this should be working. Okay, so now we're going to get into the actual code that I mentioned in the beginning. So let's go ahead and save these, close that. And so the first thing we want to be doing is in the object file. So like I had mentioned, we, uh, we can look at the map, the level. Every single one of these is a tile. This is one of the tiles, but many of these tiles up here, they're not being displayed yet. It's just displaying some of these below. So we want to check is where the position of every single one of these tiles if it's inside the window. So imagine if this right here is the window. This is the X and there's the Y. We can calculate for anything that's out there, anything out there, and we just won't draw those. We don't need to load those. So how we're going to do that, we're going to have a location for our map, what's being displayed on the screen, an X and a Y. And we're also, these have a destination and a render location, like that's in the object file. And we just need a way to be able to set and load the render. So we're going to be able to move them around. So right here, we'll just do void set dx enter x and void set dy enter y. So this is also we're going to make it so we can move around the image. So once it's only displaying what we want it to display, it's also going to be able to scroll around because you don't want to stay in the exact same part the whole entire time. And we don't need to set the width and height every time, so we can just do set destination int x and int y. Now we can go ahead and define these functions in the C++ file. So right here, go ahead and just copy that one and let's get rid of the width and the height. And then void I think I said these ones as set, but we want to actually be get. Sorry about that. So we can pull where it's at. So it's going to be an integer. I'll fix that in the last thing. Integer object get dx return dx. Integer object get dy return dx.y. Now we fix these in the header file. So it's an integer. It's an integer as well. And we don't need any parameter in there. Yeah, now that's sad. We're just going to go into the game file. So in the game header, one thing that I decided we can change, make it look a little bit nicer, is just the size of the game. We're going to be setting that to. Um, we can set that to 1280 and 720. Let's make it look a little better, I think. And now we're going to have, we're going to need our maps location. So we'll just set it to map X and map Y. And for right now, we're just going to have a function that just will automatically scroll the map by itself. Let's scroll, let's call it that. And that can be set to void. So now in the C++, we're going to go down to this function right here, draw map. That's where the actual map is being drawn. So like I mentioned right now, it's drawing all of them, even if they're not actually in the screen. So we need to be able to parse through it and make it so it only draw the ones that are needed. I'm going to go ahead and make the function right now. Um, we're going to need to check for the coordinate for dx first. So we'll get get dy dx. And now let's check if that is um, check if it's greater or equal to the map x. And we're gonna go ahead up here in the instructor and we can set that map x, map y, we can set that to zero. Now we're gonna need to do the y and do map i dot get dy and check if it is greater or equal to map y. And now we need, that's just check if it's inside the corner. So if it's up here, in these corners, say this is the window, 
it's up here it's not going to load it but what if it's outside here let me make sure it doesn't get anything that is greater than it so map i get dy you know, dx and now we can check if map x plus the width plus the tile size is greater and do map I get dy and we'll do the exact same thing map y plus the height plus the tile size so let's go ahead and make that let's go ahead and run it so as you can first tell there's no actual difference looks like it cropped something out right there so you can go and check that so we can do minus tile size and minus tile size right there let's see if that fixes it Okay, yeah, fix it. Alright. And show that's actually working. And if you do minus 100 and actually, what did you do? Plus 100 on these ones. And there's not really anything on the right side of the screen, so it won't make too much of a difference on that side. But you'll be able to see on the other corners. And you'll show that this will crop out some of the stuff. And see, it's cropped out right there. By 100, it's cropped 100. It's 250. It's technically 250 right here. That's not loading. It's just not showing anything. So I get rid of that. And now that we've got that made, we're gonna go ahead and make our scroll function. So game scroll. So right now, this is just gonna be just to show it to you guys how it works. We're gonna be changing some of the stuff. This will just be scrolling diagonally by itself. So we can actually go ahead and copy this, throw that in there, and we don't need to have the draw. We're going to have it move. So let's do map I, and then set destination. And now, we could even set in here speed. Maybe speed will be set in here. And speed. And for now, we can... Let's try setting our speed to one. So now we want to do is map i that get dx plus speed. No, plus speed. And then map i that get dy plus speed. Now we should be able to run that. And we'll see that I'll be scrolling diagonally across the map. So let's check this out. Yeah, there, there's an automatic scrolling. Um, it's kind of cropping out right there. I'm not. We can look at the map file to make sure there's actually something there. It looks like it's right here. There's five. Should be something there. Let's reverse that to see if it does on both sides. Dropping that out. So, for now, if we were to get rid of that, this if statement, it will load it all. Now you can tell it's scrolling through and it's loading it all. And it plus. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't mean to copy that. I only need to copy this part. Because as of now, we're going to need it moving all of the blocks. Because if it doesn't move the other blocks that are out on the side, it's not going to know. Um, 
what the next block's going to be. But we only need it displaying these blocks. So that's it for this this episode's tutorial. We fixed up a few things. We made it so it only draws on the screen. Uh, we're going to be changing around some more stuff so the screen can load a little bit faster, at least so it's not just black right instantly, but also depends on your computer as well. And next time we're going to be setting up our player class for the player will be on the screen and there'll be input. So the scrolling will work based on if he goes left or right and everything like that. So that's what we're going to be doing next time. Thanks for watching so much. If you're new here, if you liked anything, feel free to check out my other videos. I have a couple other random videos just on programming and how to basic stuff. And if you liked it enough, feel free to give a like there. You can leave any sort of comment or anything in the comments below. And if you're new and you want to stick around, feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much. And until next time, goodbye.